Hey everyone, Mark here from a Name Mark podcast, and it's finally happening. I'm doing a review of a movie. Now I've already done one before, which was on the podcast, and I believe, and I didn't do a video version of it. This time around, for the new RSS feed for a Nerd Name Mark reviews, this is going to be like the first real episode to go on that RSS feed for audio. So if you're listening to this, hey, thanks. So, uh, whatever platform you're listening to it on. Subscribe to it so you can see when more uh, and listen to more reviews when they go live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like, and comment on the video and let me know what you think about the movie I'm about to talk about. Because I didn't get to see this in theaters, obviously, because theaters were closed. I live in San Diego. I've actually been waiting and wanting to see Monster Hunter. One of my first videos I did uh, returning back to YouTube after my channel got deleted due to an error on my part but also google's part uh one of the first real videos i did was reacting to the monster hunter trailer and i even said in that i was like i'm excited i like the way the monsters look the design looks good i had some questions about how it was going to turn out but here we are i finally now it is february 17th as of yesterday the 16th the movie was now put on digital for renting and buying for video on demand and I was like, you know what? I waited long enough. I'm going to treat myself to a early birthday present. I'm going to rent Monster Hunter. I'm going to watch this movie because uh, I have a history of not liking Paul W.S. Anderson films. Uh, obviously, Alien vs. Predator and uh, what else did he do? All the Resident Evil films, obviously. I'm trying to think what he did besides Resident Evil. I don't really know i just know i kind of like to steer clear of his name because he has tropes for how he handles all his movies and just a forewarning if you are watching or listening to this there are spoilers i'm not gonna warn you before i say the spoilers there's just gonna be a lot of spoilers in this review so you are warned now if you don't want spoilers do not watch or listen to this if you don't care about spoilers welcome Let's get this this show on the road. I was going to swear, but I'm like, no, I'm trying to keep it PG. So, right off the bat, the pacing of this film is horrendous. Now, I was going to live tweet while I was watching the film, but then I realized I want to spoil it on Twitter for people. But also, at the same time, I wanted to just, like, keep an open mind, no distractions, just watch this. Not to nitpick it, but, I'm like, I know how... Paul W. S. Anderson does a lot of jump cuts for action, this and that. And I knew if I look at my phone, I'm going to miss something. So, because he's going to just jump cut. His editing style, especially for action sequences, is just... A lot of people have complained about it. And you think after how many Resident Evil movies were there? Six or seven? There was a lot. I don't know. I think the first two were decent. After that, everything was just trash. And Guilty Pleasure, Alien vs. Predator, is a Guilty Pleasure film of mine. Um, Just because I'm a huge fan of Aliens, I'm a huge fan of Predator, so obviously, if I'm in the mood, I'll watch them. I have them on Blu-ray, like, I will watch them if I'm in the mood. It's kind of like day after tomorrow, like, whenever I'm sick, like, with the flu or anything major where I have to be in bed and I feel like complete trash, there are certain films I'll watch. The day after tomorrow, Uh, Rampage, uh, Alien vs. Predator, like, so it's not really top tier, like, cream of the crop films but that's besides the point right off the bat pacing mm. and i will say this i took a little no- a couple notes of timestamps. so the first like 20 minutes of this film is basically a lot a lot of action not really building up story though there's not a lot of story in this movie I think with credits, including the stinger in the middle of the credits, all together, I think it was like an hour and 43 minutes. So, technically speaking, an hour, a little bit over an hour and a half of actual movie. But the opening sequence, there's some action to it. I thought it was pretty cool. We had Mila Jovovich and the side characters who don't, spoiler, they don't last long. They die. They die very quickly, and it makes no sense. Um, They're... You know, there's a storm. They think the enemy's hiding behind the storm because they're looking for Bravo team. This is Alpha team. And right off the bat, there's a storm in the desert. And they're like, maybe the enemy's hiding behind the storm. And I'm like, that's your theory. 
that the enemy is hiding behind this massive wall of storm and storms aren't predictable and non-controlled there's no real way that like i could see an enemy convoy behind a storm just moving perfectly in unison with it to ambush someone but they go through the storm it teleports them to a new world they don't realize it at first and then they find like a graveyard of military stuff and bravo team then right off the bat diablos pops up and they're just shooting at it nothing works you know two or three of them die and then they escape into a cave and now they're basically being attacked by scorpion spiders which are it's funny that they're these monsters i forgot the name of them even though i'm a monster hunter fan that they're so predominantly shown for the first basic hour of the movie because they're just little throwaway monsters in the game like you can just like kick them and they die you know they're not like these drastically tough monsters in monster hunter they're kind of like the fodder in the video games so you know mila vadovitz gets like stabbed by the scorpion stinger on one of them and then she wakes up in like a little you know cocoon and it makes no sense that basically everybody but one of them is dead and she was captured first as that so i'm like how did she magically live through this but all the other ones are dead and she got stabbed by one too and then ti's character was the only one who also survived but then he dies pretty quickly when he lifts up his shirt and realizes that like oh my just the spider things hatch out of his torso and i'm just like well she was stabbed too by the stinger and was in the cocoon so she just doesn't have any eggs laid inside of her like magically she avoided all the death but the same thing that happened to her happened to everyone else but they died so right at the bat i'm like okay if she gets psychic powers or anything like that, like, I'm turning this movie off. I've decided I'm turning it off. Not going to watch it. So then she meets up with Tony Jaa. He saves her, but they fight each other. Mind you, right now she's injured with a foot wound and possibly a cracked or broken rib. And she's able to beat Tony Jaa in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right off the bat, that kind of took me out because I'm a huge Tony Jaa fan. I love Tony Jaa, Ung Bak, uh, Tommy Young Fat, or The Protector. Um, I think... He's a really good actor. One of the things I hated was their interactions for basically the next 40 minutes because the language he speaks and the language she speaks, two different languages. I get that. And then it's just banter back and forth where she's kind of teaching him English. One word's here and there like chocolate and bait and their names. But I don't know. They didn't even do their names. There's no names actually. Like, you, you get Mila Jovich's character's name and all the other soldiers, but they're all dead except for her. But other than that, no one else has a name in this freaking movie. And I was like, okay, this is weird. No one has a name. And I think the language barrier just kind of ruined the plot. If there, the, there's a plot, but there's no story. Like, plot and story, to me, are two different things. Plot is the, the main, everything going on. You know, point A, point B story is everything in between to deepen the plot and there was no story to this especially because the language took it out so basically he's training her with weapons and all of a sudden she's proficient in like dual blading and this and that and there's elemental magic to the blades but they never explain any of that she just gets shocked and she's like you should have told me and it's like really that's that's it like okay so mainly now we're an hour, over an hour, hour and six minutes into it. That's when I took the, the note of the timestamp. They actually now finally get past Diablos and kill Diablos. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, the, the, the creature design is so good. That's one thing I will give them credit for, the creature design. The action cuts suck, though, because it'll be mid-action sequence of a monster, and they'll cut to, like, a facial expression of a character. And then cut back to the, the latter half of the action, and I'm like, why why are you doing jump cuts like this editing for action you're putting all this money and all this detail and care into creature design and you do all these weird cuts during action sequences and it just makes no sense to me um eventually though more people like joni jaws like company that he was a part of show up and we see ron perlman who kind of looks like a uh, human version of the cowardly lion without a beard like i don't know what's going on with his hair um 
I liked some of the armor design, like Tony John, this and that. I didn't really care for. I get because if you play Monster Hunter, there's so many different types of armor. So she kind of like Mila Jovovich's character is kind of wearing base armor, and you got Tony John ja, who's wearing this armor. If you could see all the armor and the different weapons that were made from, like if you played the games, it's all fan service for the armor and the weapons and the monsters. But other than that, Ron Perlman can speak English, by the way. He's not from our world, though. Apparently, multiple people have came in from our world to their world because it's two different worlds, and he studied and learned their language. But he decided not to teach any of the other ones the language. So we dealt with an hour, over an hour of Tony Ja and Mila Jovovich just basically, it was entertaining, mind you, in a dumb, funny way. But this, I feel like if, you know, maybe Tony Ja's character understood the language to an extent, we could have got more explanation of everything because like so much stuff wasn't explained. This is a popcorn flick now, like, but in the worst possible way, not even a complimentary way. Now, everything leading up to now was building up to the final battle. And I looked and I was like, okay, well, we're like an hour and 20 minutes. Like we got like 20 minutes left and we're just now going into the final battle. And then I was like with credits. So Rathalos is the big bad. And they, they, they set all these like little plot devices, but never panned out like, I assume Tony Jaa's wife and kid were killed by Rathalos because he had little statue figurines of them and he was praying to them every night and then he would be like, Rathalos. And so I guess we assumed that was what happened. And so they go into the final fight. Rathalos is just trashing everybody and then somehow it's, you know, Mila Jovovich falls off a cliff. We're back in our world. Rathalos followed her. So now we see the scenes from the trailer that I talked about where we see Rathalos taking down a plane and all these other tanks, and then it ends up being Milodrovic fighting Rathalos one-on-one on our world. And magically, spoiler, Tony Josh shows up, helps her. They defeat it. Mainly she defeats it by himself, herself, but Tony Josh hits the final blow that causes it to explode and be on fire. Then, you know, Ron Perlman shows up, and... We see them now basically about to go back into Tony Jaw's world because the final boss is going to start with the big bad, the super dragon, whose name I forgot. And I was took, I was trying to take a note and I was like, oh, who, what dragon is that again? But I forgot who it was. <laughs> and then literally right as they're jumping at it, they do like the what I call the Power Ranger shot where they're all got their weapons, all the elements are charged up on it, and they're just lunging towards it, and then it's like all three in a row for the, the nice little pan shot of here comes the dragon, here's all three of them, and then stop credits. And I'm like, really? The credits now? Like, that is a horrible. And then midway through the credits, we see the Palico show up with its elemental weapon, and then it starts running at it too, and then boom, back to credits. Palico scene, though, when it was cooking was pretty cool. Like, that was earlier on. There's a quick little... So there's... there's This movie had fan service here and there. And I love... Like, I'm usually a big fan of fan service. Big fan of fan... Yeah, that works. And But this time, it just didn't do it for me. Because yeah, there's so much potential with Monster Hunter to make a story. Like, I'm glad the military side of it wasn't so like injected heavily into it it was basically just the first like 20 minutes then a quick five to eight minute scene towards the end and that was it so because my main thing and a lot of people were concerned was this movie was going to take place in our world a lot but it really didn't it was maybe a total of 15 minutes at that so at the end of the day i tweeted this out and I still agree with it. It's probably one of the worst movies I've seen in recent years. Not from the standpoint of just overall horror, like worst movie, but just from the standpoint of it was generally a movie I wanted to see. And I wanted it to be good. And the potential was there, but it just fell flat. I think if there was an actual story to it, because there was literally no story. And if the jump cuts and editing of action sequences weren't the way they were, because let me tell you, I'm going to say some positive things about it. The, mon the, the monster design, visuals, and the, snap, and the set pieces, really good. Like, top notch. Like, that is what kept me watching this film. 
But other than that, it was like nothing against Mila Jovovich. I think she's a really good actress. Tony Ja, one of my favorite action martial arts actors. Besides the other guy from The Raid. I always forget his name because I'm bad at enunciating names. And I hate saying names wrong. And I think, you know, his character was good for what it was. But I would have liked more. Because, like, you hint at a story. You hint at the family and this and that. Like, draw us in. Make it, you know, deeper than it had to be. It doesn't have to be, like, a super deep, like, you know, a Joker or a Dark Knight trilogy or... Just, like it doesn't have to be this deep movie, but you can at least give us the bare minimum of an actual story and some dialogue and character development. And but other than that, like yeah, so I say when it's the worst movie, like yes, there are worse movies out there, but for me personally, because I don't watch movies that I know are horrible, I had hope for this film, and the way it just abruptly ended, I was like, okay, he's doing another franchise. But the, the bad scene, we don't know if he's going to... If they, I don't even think, as of right now, if they greenlit a second film. And if they did, I hope he learned his lesson because this was just... Mm. It, and it just sucks because this film was supposed to come out in 2020. When you think about it, that's the same year we got Sonic the Hedgehog. And Sonic the Hedgehog was so good. Like, I had a hope we... We've been getting some good video game movies, finally. And there was hope... And then Monster Hunter came out, and it's once again like, ah, oh, here we go. My only hope is if they do do multiple movies, they just end up being all right and decent, and then Capcom's just, like, going to pull what they're doing now with rebooting the films and doing the animated, like, CGI series for Netflix. It's just like, okay, Paul W. S. Anderson, we gave him Monster Hunter. Now let's do Monster Hunter our way. Because this, mm. I was talking to a friend of mine. I said flat out, hey, I'm just letting you know, I hated this movie. But you can go check it out. It might be good. You might enjoy it. I don't know. That's up to you. But that's really it for the film. Uh, this is the full spoiler episode. Um, I was going to do like a quick non-spoiler like video, audio version. But then I was like, well, I don't want to do two. I don't want to milk and talk and think about this film that many times. So I'm just going to do one big spoiler episode. <sighs> just... You know, it, I'm still going to play Monster Hunter Rise when it comes out on the Switch in like a month or two. Uh, at least, unlike the Resident Evil films, it didn't really tarnish the the the, fran the Resident Evil name, in my opinion. Uh, it's just not. It's not good. It's not good. It, it's enjoyable. It, you can enjoy it if you're going open-minded and don't think. But if you actually try and like figure out the plot and a full story to it, you're just going to get a headache. But that's really it for Monster Hunter. Uh... If you're watching this on YouTube in the comments, so let me know what you th if you've seen the movie, what you think about it, or why you chose not to see it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos when they go live. If you're listening to this on the Ars, Ars feed for the podcast audio version, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts or any podcasting platform you listen on so when more reviews go live, you will see them. Because unlike the main podcast, the review ones... There's not just be one every week, like whenever I want to do a review. So sometimes you might get two or three reviews a week. Sometimes you might get one, sometimes you might get zero. But obviously if you follow me on social media, just a nerd named Mark on Twitter, Instagram, you will get notified when uh, anything goes live, any new posts or this and that. So make sure you're following there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. My name is Mark and I'm a nerd.